Hey friend, welcome back to Safe at Homestead. I am so happy you're here. Guess what's happening today? We are finally doing July's garden tour. I hope that the weather will cooperate so that we can get it done. Before we go out, I wanted to take a second to talk about my new word of the year. That is pivot. <music> First, I wanted to say a very, very warm welcome to those of you who've joined recently. I am so happy you've chosen to spend time with us here at Safe at Homestead. My name is Elena and I am mini steading on 1,600 square feet here in the desert of New Mexico. So the reason I wanted to talk about the word of the year is, I don't know if you're the type that chooses a word of the year or something to kind of live by for the year. Mine was consistency. I wanted to try to be consistent in all different aspects of my life. Um, home life, relationships, garden, everything. But as things have changed in my garden, as things have not worked out the way I planned, I started thinking about uh, a word that could get me through this time of, of challenge and discouragement, and that word is pivot. I am just going to pivot. So my garden doesn't look the way I planned it, the way I sketched it, far from it. But there's some things growing in my garden. And I'm going to keep trying to get things to grow. If one thing doesn't grow, I will pivot and grow something else. If one seed doesn't grow, I will pivot and try something else. But I'm going to keep trying and keep pivoting until the season's over. As long as I can keep doing something out in the garden, I am going to try so come on guys, let's go outside and see. It is about 96 degrees and it looks a little overcast. I don't know, it may be wishful thinking, but let's go see what we can get done in the garden. Come on. They're wondering, what's mommy doing out here? <laughs> I can't believe it, you guys. It finally happened. A cloudy moment. It is... 96 degrees right now but it is totally cloudy it is after 7 and lately even at 8 o'clock it is so hot and sunny and I am so excited that I've had this moment to do my July garden all right so I like to start here with this green stalk so let's do that my parsley is doing so nicely I'm going to cut it back probably tomorrow and the thyme as well and just dry a little bit of it in my dehydrator these uh, strawberries are doing great they're not producing any more fruit right now but they have so many runners look at that and I am just sticking them in different spots for example I just stuck this one here I just stuck this one here in this this cell it had a strawberry in it but it didn't make it so i just put that one in there and water it when i'm done i am going to make this my strawberry green stock the only thing it has besides strawberries is a few of the mexican sunflower plants and some portulaca okay next to the green stock are the okra i am kind of excited about this because it seems like that is snow she's our vocal chicken she always has a lot to say so these four I think have decided this is their home they seem quite established especially this first one it is actually there's a lot of growth there I even see a couple of little okras on them so that is exciting uh, there's not well I don't want to sound pessimistic I was gonna say there's not a lot of exciting things in the garden actually there are but they're just just a few challenges as well so I'll turn around here and this is the bed that had the all the store-bought garlic I put uh, these peppers in here. These are called Scotch Butch. 
is that what they're called? Scorpion. Scorpion butch. And they are supposed to be a very hot pepper. Over there, I had three other peppers that were the hottest pepper in the world. They were an Indian pepper and they just did not make it. They died. And so what I did is I just decided I was going to put um, beans in here. So this row... They're not very well defined, <laughs> but the first two rows are uh, Maxibel Haricot. The next two rows are Contender, and then this one right here is um oh what is it called a strike bean. And right over here, I had several strike beans. They came up. They were doing well, just like these, and then they just disappeared when they disappear i think it's the birds when they just dry up and uh fall over and i can find them dried up then i know it's the weather okay so over here i put some beets in and i'm not a hundred percent sure what's going on with the beets so this is a beet this is a beet We'll just have to see. This is a beet. Some of it looks like the birds. And some of it just looks like it's hard to tell if it's birds or heat. Let's come around the other side so we can talk about this dill. This is garlic dill. And I am surprised that they're still here. I mean, they totally dried up after I put them in. They did not look good at all. But I just kept watering them and they seem to be bouncing back. So we will see. Some of these beans are doing great. Like this one has two in the same hole. And I don't know if I want to transplant it or not. Because, for example, right here... Here's a seed that didn't come up here. All of these seeds were pre-sprouted, by the way. So they should have all... I know they were all viable because they all sprouted. Just they didn't all make it. Here is my... One of my Brussels sprouts. And I need to do some work on these Brussels sprouts. I need to start breaking off some of these bottom uh, branches so that they can start... Um, getting larger the little sprouts and this is one of my red cabbages there's a little head in there I think they take a lot longer than the white cabbage I'm not sure just in my experience here the white cabbages have uh, grown faster and their head has uh, formed a lot faster than the red cabbages I put some Brussels sprouts in here the other day. Uh, I think I have time to get them to a good size and then hopefully they will continue to thrive throughout the fall and we can have some Brussels sprouts. Here is a sad, sad thing. We have a rabbit that's been getting in. I don't know exactly how he's getting in, but he ate my beans. He didn't eat this flower. This is the butterfly, the blue butterfly flower, I think. Didn't eat that. He ate all the beans except for this one. And then yesterday he ate this one as well as my volunteer bean. So I had a bag with several uh, pre-sprouted beans and I put them in here today. I can tell that the birds have visited because see that? That is the bird coming through, digging, looking for things. And that's how my seeds get displaced and my roots get damaged. Those birds. Okay, let's keep going this way. This is the other bed that had the garlic that I ordered in the mail. And But uh, if you haven't noticed, the black stuff is, is black plastic. Uh, and that's what I chose to do to cut back on how much damage the birds can do. Because I really, really, really wanted to get some... Um, beans in the one that I showed before <clears throat> and then here I wanted to make sure that my 
pumpkins survived. So here are two peppers. Let's see. Chile de Arbol is what these are. That one didn't make it. These two, well, this one, I don't know, I expect it to croak any day now, but this one is trying to hang on. This little bite here is from a couple of my chickens got out and they came running right here. It's funny how they have that memory, uh, but these two beds were their beds last year and it was kale and they loved the smaller kale that was growing here. So they came running right to this bed. This is, Hmm, let me think. I think this is the Cinderella pumpkin. I should have brought my notebook out with me because I have been, and there's two of them, I have been replanting and replanting so much that some of the labels don't apply anymore. I haven't relabeled or I have just, it's all a blur to me because as the sun just kills off my uh, plants and or as the birds pull them out or whatever I am just replanting because we're pivoting right even if things aren't working exactly how we wanted them to we're gonna do something else but we're gonna keep planting so I have two Cinderella pumpkin plants here I need to take one out I don't I I have to check depending on how close they are to each other I might cut one because I don't want to affect the roots of the other if they're tangled up We'll see. This is, uh, what is this pumpkin called? New England something. New England something. It's not doing great. I put two in here. Oh, that's interesting. See that? It's like a, I don't know. It's like a ditch in the side of the stem and I planted two and they both came up. They were pre-sprouted and the other one's gone. I might start that one again and uh, replace this one or put it in with this one and just see which one survives. And then over here I put, oh, what did I put? They're either beans or peppers. Like I said, I'm just putting seeds in. I don't necessarily remember what I put in here, but I want stuff to grow. So as it dies off or gets pulled out, I put things in here. I think I want to say I put uh, peppers in here. Over here is one of my pride and joys. It's my cabbage. So beautiful. And I'm going to let that one go a little bit longer. This one Oh, it's perfect. I'm going to pick that one this week. This broccoli here, uh, there are two broccolis and they already uh, developed their head. We already took them and ate them and these are the side shoots, but I delayed. I waited too long to pick these side shoots and so they're not exactly, yeah, these are good for the chickens now. Give them something to be entertained by. Hey, you. <laughs> they are doing really well considering the heat. We had 103 degrees today. And man, it was a scorcher. So I brought their ice out for them. And everybody was in a hole. They just dig their little hole and settle in. I feel bad for them. Oh, here's another red cabbage. That one's kind of hidden. I didn't even notice it. And I can tell it does it. It's just starting to form a head. And then here's another. Just starting to form a head. And here's another little cabbage. That one's hard too. Okay, I, oh, uh, this is um, Swiss chard, and that is Swiss chard, and I'm a kind of excited, <laughs> I am trying not to be too excited, because they seem to be doing well. 
Swiss chard this year, I mean, this time last year, we were eating Swiss chard three, four times a week. This year, I can't get them to even... Yeah, well, anyways, that's a Swiss chard, and that's a Swiss chard. And what I did over here is I sprayed, or not sprayed, but just sprinkled some... Oh, my gosh! <laughs> I was going to say I just sprinkled some carrots, even though I doubt that they would come up. But look at that! Oh my gosh, you see, there is stuff to be excited about. <gasps> Let me just leave it. Oh, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Oh, wait, look. There's some more over here. Oh my gosh. I just put it there because I figure they would be uh, shaded and not be so much in the sun. But really, I didn't hold out much hope for them. I didn't cover them with a board or do anything, any of the things that people say you should do to get carrots to grow. <sighs> I am so excited. Okay. Okay, calm down. All right, so uh, some petunias. I got a lot of uh, really inexpensive petunias, so I have petunias everywhere. This is a bean. I'm not sure what bean. I put two different beans in here, Cherokee Tears and uh, what's the other one? Cherokee Tears and the Yard Long Bean. I really hope the Yard Long Bean uh, does well here. Here's another Brussels sprout. And you see the sprouts in here. I really don't want to break them. I really rather have a something to cut them. But I want you guys to see them. And this is going to make the plant focus more. I'll give these to the chickens on growing the Brussels sprouts. See that? I always said I would never grow Brussels sprouts because I thought it, was, it, would, um, it wasn't worth the effort. But we love Brussels sprouts, so I'm trying them out. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and keep taking off all the leaves. And then that one that I showed you first, and this one I'm going to leave because supposedly uh, taking off the those bottom leaves helps them to focus on the growth of the Brussels, but also you're supposed to do that like 50 to 60 days before your first frost, which for me, my first frost is 82 days away. But... I would like to try some Brussels sprouts. So I am going to um, get this one ready to grow bigger sprouts and let these just stay. This one and the other one just stay till later. Okay, so these beans were not eaten by the rabbit. These, I, I don't know what order I put them in, but I alternated the Cherokee Tears and the... Um, the Cherokee Tears and the Yard Long. And hopefully they'll stay hidden. Now, today I came out here. Let's go back over here. Today I came out here and planted. I did mention that. I planted some more of the stringless pole beans because I had those already pre-sprouted. And I had some more of the Yard Long. So I put, I think I put one. Yeah, I could see where I put it. See that? That's a pre-sprouted bean, and that is a pre-sprouted bean. So, hopefully, I will get some more, just in case the rabbit eats any of these. We have to figure out how the rabbit's coming in. I, I have an idea of where he's coming in. Okay. This is a really, really sad bed. I planted so much kale to dinosaur kale, premium kale, which is this, and a bunch of calendula, and just all sorts of things here, and nothing grew. This grew. This grew. And about a month and a half later, or a month later, I re-sowed everything again. Nothing grew. I have no idea why that would be, but that's what's happening here. This is one of three sorrel plants that I had here. Only that one survived, and it hasn't really done much of anything. It's, it's, 
yeah, it's it doesn't even seem to be growing much. It has grown. It was smaller when I put it in, but it's not thriving. It's just barely hanging on. More petunias, and that says lacinato, but that's not true. That's the kale that I had in here that did nothing. I put some peppers in here. Now, what peppers did I put? I am so bad about that. Um, I mean, I, I'm going to give myself some grace. It's just that every, it seems like every three weeks or so, I'm putting something new in. And I'm not keeping up as well as I should with labeling stuff. But I just want to get stuff in. This, I think, is, there's a label. Let me see. These are Sonora. And it sounded like such a nice pepper. They are not doing well at all. I, I feel almost like I am overwatering because I I come out and water every day almost because well I, I do come out and water every day but not everything gets watered every day because I check for moisture before I water. So I don't know what the deal is with that. And then these are what are these? This was Swiss chard according to that sign but nope. Uh, let's see. Oh these are Tabasco. These are Tabasco, and this one's doing well. It's producing fruit. This one is alive, but seems stunted. And then that one, well, it's alive too, but it's not. It keeps losing its leaves, and that's weird, because I don't know if something is attacking that one or what. Okay, let's... Uh, right here next to the peppers is one of the Kennebec potatoes. I was just moving dirt around earlier today to see if I could feel any potatoes and I haven't. I'm a little bit nervous about that because that would be sad <laughs> if I got no potatoes. And then here is another Kennebec potato. You guys, I am so happy. I mean, I feel great to be out here. It is... Today's high was 103, like I said. It's about 96 right now. There's a light breeze and it is cloudy. This cloud cover is so welcomed. I have not been able to come out here and just enjoy the garden. I've just been dashing and doing something quickly and running back in because, you know, it's hot. Okay, I should have removed this before I started the tour, but the reason this is here is because the peppers and the tomatoes they cannot handle i mean once it gets over 85 or so it's not very good for them they drop their flowers if they have flowers they just don't like it super hot and some of these peppers have flowers and i was trying to protect them so let me go take this off and we'll be right back okay i have removed all the shade cloth and i saw something that made me sad all right this pepper plant is doing not too bad and this one they are called new mexico joe what are they called joe e parker and they are uh were developed here at the university i had two other ones there and they did not make it which come on they're supposed to be they were developed to survive new mexico heat so i have two they're not doing much of anything but this one what is this? Do I have a label? You see how many flowers are in this one? I did not want to lose these flowers and some of them you can see are looks like they were pollinated and here's a pepper. Oh, I wish I could find a label for this. I am not sure. But you know what? At this point, I just want peppers. I don't really care what kind of peppers they are. This one is that one that I did not know the name of. I could never read the lady's label. It's something ahi or ahi something amarillo. And this has been in the ground so long. It should be doing something, but it's not. Well, I mean, it should have fruit by now. But it does have lots of little flowers, so that's exciting. I don't know what this is. This might just be a bell pepper. It is coming to a point though, so I don't think it is. And the sad thing is that this one over here, back here, has a big hole. I'll take it. Yeah, something. 
was eating that. I'll give it to the chickens. And then this one, I don't know what this is. I, I, I have some, um, uh, shishitos in here, but I don't know what they, which ones they are anymore. This one says Tabasco, but that's not Tabasco. Uh, there was probably a Tabasco here. You know what I mean? I'm, that's what I'm saying. Uh, as soon as something dies, I put something else. So, yeah, but not very good with the labeling. I These might be Tabasco here, though. Okay, let's come over here. Look at the other side of this. Tomatoes. I will be surprised if I harvest any tomatoes this year. Uh, this, there was one right here, another Illini star. This is an Illini star. This one never looked good from the beginning. This one had, you can tell by this, it had a tomato hornworm, you can see. I hope it doesn't have one now. <laughs> it had a really big tomato hornworm on it. Got him off, and there are some flowers. It did have a couple of tomatoes. One just dried up and fell off, and the other, uh, something started eating it, so I pulled it off. Oh, what am I saying? Look at this, there's some more. There's one there and one there. Yay! That is exciting. Every now and then I come through and I... Uh, this is an indeterminate tomato. So every time I come through here, I look for... Um, what do you call it? The armpit things. And I pull them off because I don't want... Uh, I don't want to strain it. I don't want it to have to do more than it has to. I just want to get some tomatoes from it. Suckers. That's the word I was trying to think of. The suckers. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure what this is. Uh, this says shishito right here. So this was a shishito pepper. No more. And this might have been another shishito. No more. It's hard to tell what's going to work and what's not going to work, especially uh, in, well, everyone in every area has their challenges. Ours is just the, the heat and, for me, the birds. These uh, tomato cages are not here to hold up any peppers. They're really here for me to have something to put the uh, shade cloth on. All right, let's move on. Something came through and just snipped off the top of my dragon, of my snapdragons. Look at that. Isn't that weird? And yeah, this is what's left of my zinnias. I was very excited when these came up because I've never been able to grow zinnias. I still hope to get those three going. This is a tomato called Phoenix. It came from a local farmer. I had never heard about Phoenix tomatoes and she had them marked down. So I bought them. They're doing, eh, they're not doing that well, but I'm trying to keep bugs off them. They had some bugs on them. So the white, whenever you see white on anything, it's um, a diatomaceous earth. I have planted so many different things here so many different times. I don't know what's here because I tried to get some ground cherries to grow here. Nothing nothing ever succeeded, but there's something right now. It could be just the weed, but I'm going to leave it for a minute and see what that is. It's probably a, some kind of grass. This, I don't know why, but this oregano here, this is a new one. It just, I keep putting oregano in this spot. I really want oregano in this spot, but it won't, it won't grow. It won't take, they just die. And that is a, 
a Thai basil that I put in here at the beginning of the season, so back in May. And look how tiny it is. This, these are the peas that I moved from here when I decided to put this archway here. It seemed to be doing okay. I put something else in here. I think I put some beans in here. Um, but they're not coming up. I just didn't want to waste this container uh, since it wasn't really going to produce any peas. But mm, That's a bitter pea. This, uh, I have to say, this, well, should I say it's a fail? I mean, I've put all sorts of things in here. This is some thyme that's not doing well. It's drying up. These do great though, at Portulaca, they do great everywhere. I have put several peppers in here. This is the only one. I think it's a yellow hot. It's the only one that survived and doing anything. And recently I planted a bunch of seeds in here, but for the life of me, I don't know what I put. This is some kind of lettuce, but I don't know what I put in here, but everything, most cells have something in them. They're just not coming up yet, so I'm going to give it a little bit of time. My green stalks get watered every day, so something should come up. This is a mint plant. Let's make sure. Yep, this is a mint plant that didn't do too well, but I know it will come back because we all know how mint is, right? It's a very determinate plant, and it it it, um, it will take over. So yeah, it'll come back. And that is a calla lily. Why did I buy calla lily? When I researched calla lilies, they, they need shade, they need, they need everything that I don't have. But there were eight of them for four dollars. <laughs> and I couldn't pass them up, so I called up my girlfriend, asked her if she wanted some, she said yes, so I took her some and I kept some. Yeah, they all look like that or worse. But who knows, we'll give them a chance and maybe next year they'll come up. This box, still nothing. I have sewed in here twice. I come out and water it every day. There's lettuce, there's sunflowers, there's some kind of uh, other flower, there's there's everything, but nothing's wrong. Okay, the only tomato, there was a phoenix tomato there, it recently bit the dust. You can see it here. I still don't know if it's the bale or the, I think it's the heat, that's what I'm going to say. And this was my one Juliet, I love Juliet tomatoes. Nope, nothing happening here. I don't remember what I had here and here originally, but I put some tomato seeds in there because I've grown tomatoes from seed in bales before, but nothing's coming up. So. I'm not going to let those bales lay fallow. I'm going to put something in there. This is the extra green stock. Um, what do you call it? This is one of the levels. Um, it was too big. It was, I don't know if it was defective or what, but green stock did replace it. And I've put several things in here. The only thing that really... Um, survived in here. There's this calendula and whatever this is. It's kind of a vining flower and this is a oregano that <laughs> didn't survive and these are peppers that didn't survive. This bucket or bin has um, basil and I had visions of giant basil growing in here. It's been very slow growing. I did pick a bunch of it to make tea not long ago. They haven't bounced back yet. Banana potato, banana potato. I will be 
they're tipping these over soon. Still has a little bit of time to go. These are the five gallon buckets where I put beans. I've put beans in there several times. This one, I put two um, Sugar Rush peach peppers. This is the only one that came up. Today, I put several pre-sprouted Sugar Rush peach pepper seeds in here. We'll see what happens. That is another okra that looks like it's gonna call that pot its home and actually do something. That had a tomato seed or a pre-sprouted tomato of some sort. I don't hold out hope for any of these. I have one, two, three, four tomatoes, uh, buckets that I was hoping tomatoes would grow in, but nothing's happening. These are two contender beans. They seem to be doing okay. These are, these were two burgundy, <laughs> royal burgundy beans. This one just died. This one is doing okay. I had uh, two Kantari beans in here, only one surviving. I had two strike beans in here, only one is surviving. They came up, you know, like here's the, it came up, they looked fine, and then one died. And I can tell that the birds have been pulling on this one. This is a Maxibel haricot. The one that was here died. That one is trying to hold on. This, I'm not going to bother take the shade off of this. This has not changed since I put it in this bucket. It's a uh, sand... Oh! Oh, it's a um, paste tomato. What is it? I can't think of it. Hold on. It's a San Marzano pepper. Oh, sorry, sorry. San Marzano tomato. I recently covered it. It wasn't covered. I think I covered it two days ago. And nothing's happening. I've fertilized it. I've, I've done everything. And then these four is where I had... Um, where I have some seeds in there, but I don't think anything's gonna come of those. Oh, this is another banana potato bag and a banana potato bag and a banana potato bag. Lots of banana potatoes. I like them, I like fingerlings, and I hope that they have potatoes in them. This is the, the, the potato lab where I planted potatoes in these cardboard boxes and they did excellent. They've totally died back now and I was rooting around in there and I didn't see any potatoes. So who knows? We'll, we'll have to see what happens. It'll either be very exciting or very disappointing. And I don't remember what kind of potatoes I have. And then this is the volunteer potato that was in one of my new beds and I couldn't figure it out since they were new beds and nothing had ever been planted there. The original potatoes that was in here just never did anything. So I put this volunteer potato in here and he just thrived and did well. So we'll see what happens when we turn that one over. Okay, now we're going down the other side of the garden. This is, um, I, I don't know how many, well, right here in this spot, I put some calabacita pumpkins twice. I love those, um, but they just did not thrive. They did not survive. Uh, so I gave up and I put in butternut squash. I put four butternut squash twice. This one is from the first uh, butternut squash that I put in. That one is from, oh, I'm sorry, that one is from the first time I put butternut squash in. Then I put another set of butternut squash and that one survived. So I have two. And hopefully I'll get some butternut squash. We left uh, Oklahoma in October of 2020. And oh my goodness, I wish you could have seen my butternut squash. They were in bales like this and it was just all flowing. They had little baby butternut squash. And yeah, I had to leave it all. Oh, this butternut squash is doing well too. I'm gonna see what I put here and what I put over there because we're not gonna let that lay fallow. Here are the 
cucumbers and these are doing well i am so happy with these you guys we did these together uh, we planted the pre-sprouted tomatoes i'm um, sorry we planted the pre-sprouted um cucumbers i put seeds in here and they did nothing and then i came back and used uh, pre-sprouted ones so this one is a uh... oh i can't remember it's a long one this one is a armenian long this one is a suyo long these are bait alpha there are two of them and these two are are there two yeah and these two are early something early something and they seem to be doing okay so i'm proud of these uh, this container mirrors the other one that has um, the snapdragons. I, I don't think I should take these off because I think those look like new buds. So I will get new, new flowers soon. And this one has more, well, more of the, um, more of these flowers survive the, uh, more of these zinnias survived than in the other pot so all along here i put beans and they were pre-sprouted beans i am trying very hard not to plant anything that's not pre-sprouted so here's one i don't even know what it is <laughs> but there's a a bean this is a volunteer tomato and i don't know what kind of tomato it is but it's not it's in bad shape those little black things the first time I ever saw them was on um, eggplant so I know they like eggplant but I don't know what they are and they're going after that tomato so we'll see what happens there uh, so all along here I planted some uh, pre-sprouted beans here's one that came up and here's another one so we'll see if those make it this is one of my bags that I have um, basil in. I think I, I want to say that I put a bean, a pre-sprouted bean in here. There was like an extra bean and I just stuck it in there. But nothing's coming of it. I took a moment to go give the girls that pepper. This is, um, usually I have more stones in here. But this is something that I try to keep some water in for the lizards. I have lots of lizards in my garden. And for bees or any other uh, type of pollinator. So where were we? Okay, so we're here. Across from the cucumbers. And I want to say that what I have... I don't know what I have here. Did I put anything here? It's hard to think I didn't put anything because any spot that is where something didn't work, I put something. I would just have to go back and look at my notebook. But here I have basil. And these two, I think, are my best basil. I picked those the other day too. I picked from all of them the same day to make basil tea. And those just seem to, yeah, they are doing a lot better than than the others. This one was covered up and it shouldn't have been covered up. So it was covered up and it's changing. It's getting these little brown spots. And it was covered because I had a shade, shade cloth here. I was trying to shade this tomato from this side and that side. And it covered that basil. So I uncovered it. And this tomato is called Dark Star. And I have three of them. One is doing great. That one a bit the dust. And this one, I'm not calling it yet because it still has green leaves. So I'm gonna wait before I call it on this one and see what happens. 
And then right here, I can't tell you how many things I've planted. I had cantaloupe that didn't make it. Um, I had, I put some 42 day tomatoes there. Nothing. All pre-sprouted. I don't know, maybe the birds are taking them. And today I put some more pre-sprouted cantaloupe to see if they will come up. And this is a twin of that bag. It has, also has some basil, but they, they're okay, but they're not really, I wouldn't say they're thriving. This bed had onions and it was a total, well, it was a 98% fail. I got some really, really tiny onions out of it and just a handful and I just processed them. Maybe you guys remember that and put them in a baggie and put them in my fridge and I've been using them because the birds just pull 50% of them out and the 50, the other 50%, they just took the green tops off. So I couldn't really do anything about it. So I just had to take the onions out and I put black plastic I'm looking at this. <laughs> I'm looking at this because earlier today I stuck something here. I had an extra something and I don't know what it is, but I put this like that so that I know that something is here. You should have seen me this morning. I was like a maniac. It was so hot. And I just came out here with a lot of pre-sprouted things. Beans, watermelon, honeydew, not honeydew. I hate honeydew. Beans, watermelon, cantaloupe, um, yeah, I can't even think what else I had. Oh, I had some, um, not ground cherries, but tomatillos, um, just a lot of different things. And I was just sticking them in the ground anywhere and everywhere. So something is there. We'll be surprised by what comes up. This is a tomato that is called Goliath bush. It... It might have grown. I have to look at older pictures. Sometimes I look at things and say, oh, this thing hasn't grown at all. And then when I look at pictures, I see that there has been some improvement. Well, I put two of them in there, and they don't seem to be doing much to me. I would have to check. But, you know, check other pictures. But let me see. Did I put something in between? Nope. There's no hole there, so there's nothing there. And then I put peppers in here. I had a Swiss chard in here, and they died, and so I put some pre-sprouted peppers. It's been a while. I know pepper takes a long time to come up, but I'll give it some time, and then I will put something else. See, that's the Swiss chard sign uh, label for what was there, but that, that died. And then I am hopeful about these two. They took forever to get established, I mean, and seem like they're happy in this spot. But now they actually are growing. This one got a little eaten. I think it might have been the rabbit. I don't know. And then what did I put here? I have no idea. Uh, it might have been a pepper. My thing is like peppers and beans. That's what I want, peppers and beans. I really am not crazy about the black plastic, but it seems to be keeping the birds at bay, so you got to do what you got to do. So today I came in here and planted some watermelons, pulled up the last three onions that I left in here, and you can tell that the birds came in behind me. There's a hole, there's a hole there's a hole and in doing their digging they dug up a little red onion oh it is so so discouraging I don't know if any of these things will grow but on a happier note here is the moon and stars watermelon it's doing really well I love going back and looking at the picture of when I first put it in <laughs> so I can see how much it's grown. I'll probably insert a picture of that here so you can see it. So here's another bed that I had to take all the onions out of. 
Uh, most of them had no green tops. I just pulled them out. They weren't going to do well at all. There were three here, and I took those out this morning. Oh, here's another. See, I can tell that they've been digging because they're exposing some of these little onions. What on earth? I don't know if that's the birds or not. I've never known them to eat the onions. They just, they well, they eat, they, they pull at the tops of the onions and they dig up around the onions looking for whatever, bugs, and in the process expose and damage the roots. And that's what they do. Here, it's my last onion bed and I think my best onion bed. You guys, just last year was the first time I planted onions and I did so well. I was so excited. I got uh, probably double, almost double the onions I got last year. And this year I'm going to have less onions than I had last year. <sighs> but I'm going to keep trying. I'm not, I'm not giving up. Look at that luscious marigold. How green and healthy she looks. This is called a luxury something pumpkin. And seems to be doing well. I'm going to put, I'm not sure what else I'm going to put in here with this pumpkin. And these onions hopefully will get pulled today. Because I am afraid of rain like we get rain right but 15 percent chance is a lot for us and it just might happen so i want to make sure that i get these onions out before that happens so let's come around here look i never did anything with these i said i was gonna put i don't know something in there look at the sunflower the plant that we didn't know what it was this morning i came out and i saw that the bunny had eaten the the bean plant and I was so sad and then I came over here and look <gasps> sunflower let's get closer there's some kind of bugs on it and a spider I hope the spider gets the bugs that's the first one and I have oh so many one two three four five six seven oh over ten more buds I'm happy with that Okay, my not flower bed didn't really do anything. There's some zinnias, but I bought those and, and stuck those in there. I put so many seeds in here. Maybe what will happen is next spring all kinds of seeds will, whoops, I feel raindrops. All kinds of seeds uh, will sprout and we'll get lots of flowers here. I did put some dill in here dried up here's some lavender it's not doing too great this is the mystery plant we bought at this art gallery and I don't know what it is but it finally bloomed it kind of looks a little bit like a zinnia but I don't think it is and that's a sunflower the bugs are attacking it I just leave it give the bugs if the bugs are there they're not anywhere else this uh ooh what is that that's a weird looking bug oh what is that i don't know what that is weird looking bug okay this is a cantaloupe I'm not sure what this is now. <laughs> that is a pumpkin, and I, I think it's a sweet meat pumpkin. Uh, yeah, it might be a sweet meat. And this, I, I don't, I'm not sure what this is. Some kind of, I don't think it's a watermelon, but it could be. And I think that's all I'm gonna put here as far as vining things. I might put something that grows up tall. Uh, I did put some corn 
in here today I, I had corn in there before a couple of them came up and then they just disappeared probably the birds and this is that little mini corn they only get like three ears on each one and the ears are really small and the corn is really short that's why I have some in containers I'll show you that in a sec this is some more basil not doing too hot and you know what I don't like this kind of basil what is this basil sweet basil I think I like the Italian or the Greek or whatever better than these with the skinny leaves I don't think I'm gonna get this one anymore here are my random onions that I got for a dollar they were in a random spot at Home Depot and the ladies said oh just take them for a dollar I pulled one out today because it was dried up and keeled over and uh, here's another one that's oh this one didn't even do anything and look at the one that I pulled out was actually uh, it was small but it was a good size uh, onion a red onion okay moving on oh volunteer it's funny last year I planted tons of seeds uh, in beds of marigolds and nothing grew and then this year all kinds of marigolds growing in places where I didn't plant them this is a volunteer watermelon I'm not sure how he's doing there he is I just keep watering and fertilizing every so often this is the gooseberry I'm thinking gooseberries uh, I think the new growth produces the plant the gooseberry right so I got this one later in the season so I don't know maybe I will cut these big long branches off I just kept them because they were blooming and I they were having getting leaves and I didn't want to I was excited so I wanted to keep them um, let's see this is some of the calla lilies <laughs> there's the only one that looks like anything but yeah she'll be going the way of the rest too I am pretty sure but I I won't be surprised if next year they come back this is my Anna apple she's doing okay she had some rust and she had some uh, yellow leaves and that seemed to stop I I I find it hard to believe that you could water it too much but I think maybe I was watering it too much and look at that a volunteer marigold look how big and full this thing is I planted a purslane in here that didn't come up and something else there I don't know what it was and this I'm not sure what that is but we'll just let it grow see what happens this is the container that has my hubby's blackberry bush it seems to be doing okay it did get see that I'm not sure what that is but it has new growth ouch so I'm hoping next year it'll just bounce right back and we'll have some blackberries and there is the mint that died back but you know how mint is I said it before it's coming back this is my rosemary oh I love the smell that's the blackberry and this is our lemon balm I'm gonna cut some of that off too and dry it for tea here is one bucket that has the corn oh here's the little spot where I put the corn and I don't know what's gonna come of that because this is like one of the spots where the birds just tear it up but we'll see this basil is doing great actually this is this is wonderful and you see it's not that skinny leafed basil Did I have a label in here no but I'm sure it's either Italian or Greek basil so here's the corn I don't know how many times I put corn in here I think this one and this one are from the original batch they pre-sprout really really 
fast. I mean, I put them in and in like two or three days you have pre-sprouted corn. I put a whole bunch of corn in here again for the second or third time. These came up. Nothing else came up. And here we have some basil doing okay. See how much basil I planted, you guys? Because I just really wanted lots of basil, but it's not happening. And then there's a tomato that I just covered up two days ago as well. Uh, it's an early, let's see, early, oh no, better boy. It's a better boy tomato, and it was kind of a impulse buy. I just, I just wanted a tomato. I just wanted to see a tomato growing in my garden, so I got that. And I stuck this over him. I think it was yesterday because I wanted to cover him up. Too hot. That's the Mexican sunflower. I feel like even the Mexican sunflower is suffering. And that's not usually the case. This is my vine that I think is a honeysuckle. But I'm not 100% sure. Third year. I said if it didn't bloom the third year, I'm sticking it up. Okay, so let's come back around here and come look at the potatoes. They did very well, I think, but I, I feel like they needed more water. It didn't rain as much. Well, it never rains. What am I saying? Uh, but, you know, they didn't, all they got was the rain, the water I gave it, and I may not have watered it enough so I watered them today some of them got flowers there are a few that didn't but they're acting like they're dying off and I'm not sure why that is do some potatoes die off before their flowers or are they just dying because lack of water I don't know see these oops I don't remember seeing these get water I mean get flowers but who knows I tried these see these things I put these bamboos in here and I planted a vining flower around it I did it there and here because I just wanted to give some height to this area and I thought it would be nice to have something vining up but nothing came up nothing I think what did I stick in here today I stuck something in one of them to see if it would go. Oh, uh, I think I put a watermelon in here. I had an extra watermelon seed and I figured by the time that took off, I would be pulling these out. <sighs> and then these blocks that I put to hold in this straw, I put some um, miniature sunflowers in here and they did nothing oh i don't know about a month and a half ago and so about a week or so ago week and a half i put some sprout pre-sprouted beans nothing nothing i don't know if it's the soil or what and wherever i put seeds i water every day because you need to keep the seeds moist so nothing's happened with these i don't know why Oh, I cannot believe I was able to do this garden tour. The sun is going down. Well, the sun has gone down, actually. And we did it, you guys. We did it. This is still not finished, this project, the, the run expansion. Two main reasons. Um, we still don't have... Uh, access to the family uh, trailer which is what we use to get pallets and um, so it's been really challenging to get pallets and we had a friend's uh, use of a friend's truck but then the pallets were all taken away so we have to wait for another batch and hopefully can coordinate with our friends the other reason is it is just so hot even if we had the pallets when my husband gets home it is 103, 104, and it is just, yeah, it's too much to come out here and work in this. I think the chickens are okay. I think they'll be happier with more room, 
but right now we just can't finish this project we just have to wait till we uh, can get some more pallets isn't this this pretty look at this I was excited to see that and it's doing okay I need to clean it up a little bit but I have been enjoying it thoroughly it's given me more than two dollars and fifty cents worth of joy hey you what up girly isn't it your bedtime I need to check for eggs I got eight eggs today but I that was around one o'clock and I haven't been back in there since some of them are getting ready for bed it's funny the little girls are always the first ones to go in historically that's been the same thing with me whoever's the youngest they get in first I don't know who this is oh it's dark in here I can't even tell who is in that nest box it's not shush it's not Dame who has been the broody one because I see where she is but anyway she was sitting on these four eggs <laughs> Look at this egg. Remember the little girlies? They started laying and their eggs were so tiny. Uh, let me go out so I can talk without interruption. I'm trying a video with my flashlight. My phone's flashlight. Everybody's ready for bed. Most everybody. I'm surprised that... Pepper is down here sitting on these eggs because she never does that. Night night girlies! Alright guys, we did it. We did the July garden tour. I can't believe it. I am so happy. It was we almost ran out of July. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna do as I'm losing some light is the Mr. and I are gonna pull these onions. So let's do that together.